In this tutorial, I will show you how to use the L9110 motor control board and write simple Arduino code to control various types of motors in your own personal projects. The L9110 is a compact and inexpensive H-Bridge motor control board that easily interfaces with microcontrollers such as the Arduino and or Raspberry Pi. This board can be used to control two small DC motors simultaneously or can be used to control a small stepper motor such as a NEMA 17. The board operates between 2.5 and 12 volts DC and is capable of sourcing 800 milliamps per phase sustained or 1.5 amps momentarily. This tutorial is divided into three videos. Part 1 covers the speed and direction control of DC motors. Part 2 discusses the control of linear actuators. Part 3 demonstrates how to control the speed and direction of stepper motors. Each video includes step-by-step -step instructions as well as basic Arduino coding that can be incorporated into your own projects. A link to the components and tools used in these videos will be provided in the description below. This board is very similar to the L298N motor controller, but with a little less functionality but as you can see, it is significantly more compact and also has a much lower cost. I only paid about 75 cents for this one on eBay. I plan on making another tutorial about the L298N in a future video. I also plan on making a video showing how to use the L9110 as part of a solar tracking phone charger using these solar panels and this gear motor. I'm waiting for a few more parts to arrive, so please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss it. It should be a very fun video and I plan on going step by step so that you can see exactly how I do it. Please like and share these videos if you find them useful. My channel is only a few months old and I'm trying to grow so that I can continue making fun and useful content. The L9110 control board measures about 30 millimeters long and about 23 millimeters wide. It's about 15 millimeters tall with the terminals and pin header installed, but can have a much lower profile with them removed. The board has four 3 millimeter mounting holes. Each board has two L9110 chips. Each chip can control the speed and direction of one DC motor. Each motor has its own terminal block. Motor A is on the right, motor B is on the left. Now let's talk about the pin header. The third pin from the left is the ground pin and should be connected to the negative terminal of your power supply. To the right is the VCC pin which should be connected to the positive terminal of your power supply. The onboard LED indicates when the board has power. I do not recommend connecting ground and VCC to your Arduino as this can overload the power supply depending on the power required to drive the motors. The two pins on the right are for controlling motor A and the two pins on the left are for controlling motor B. The pins are either labeled 1A or 1B. We will discuss that more in a minute. These are the pins that need to be connected to the Arduino. Now, if you're only concerned about motor direction, you can use regular digital high-low output pins. If you want to control speed and direction, you will need to use pulse width modulation PWM pins. A potential of at least 2.5 volts is required for the control board to recognize a high signal, so keep that in mind when selecting your microcontrollers. Both Arduino and Raspberry Pi will work fine for, with this board. Let's connect motor to channel A and demonstrate the basics of direction control using the digital write command. For this example, I will use a gear motor so that we can easily see the motor direction. Let's wire this up and then write some Arduino code to demonstrate. If you know the polarity of your motor, connect the positive wire of the motor to the motor A connector on the left and the negative wire to the connector on the right. If you do not know the polarity, don't worry about it. It will be very easy to fix if your motor spins opposite of what you wanted. For this demonstration, I will be using 10 volts from my power supply through a breadboard. First, I will connect the positive to VCC and the negative to ground. If I were using, say, a 12 volt battery for the motor control board and a 9 volt battery for the Arduino, I would want to make sure the ground pin on the motor control board and the ground pin on the Arduino are both connected to a common reference. For direction control only, I can select any two digital output pins on the Arduino. I will connect Arduino pin 3 to A1A on the control board and Arduino pin 2 to A1B. If we give a high command to pin A1A and a low command to pin A1B, the motor will spin counterclockwise when looking at the end of the shaft. 
If we give a low command to pin A1A and a high command to pin A1B, the motor will spin clockwise. If we give a high command to both channels or a low command to both channels, the motor will not spin. Let's write some basic Arduino code to demonstrate. First, we need to define what pins on the Arduino correspond with the pins on the motor control board. We'll create a constant integer for A1A as pin 3 and A1B as pin 2. In our setup loop, we will set the pin modes for both pins as outputs. In the loop, we will set pin A1A low and pin A1B high. This will cause the motor to spin in a clockwise direction. We will hold this direction for two seconds using the delay command. Now we will switch pin A1A to high and A1B to low. This will cause the motor to spin in the opposite direction and we will hold it in that state for another two seconds. Make sure to select the correct board and serial port to upload the sketch. I've connected VIN on the Arduino to the 10 volts on my breadboard, also ground to ground. Let's test it out by turning on the power supply. As you can see, the motor changes direction every two seconds. Now let's add a second motor to channel B and demonstrate speed control. I've connected this vibrating motor to the control board. I've also connected B1B on the control board to Arduino pin 11 and B1A to pin 10. I selected pins 10 and 11 because they are both capable of pulse width modulation. Now back to the Arduino code. First we need to define two more integers for the B1A and B1B connections. And we will declare both of these as outputs. I'm also going to define a variable for speed and start by setting it equal to 51. With PulseMyth modulation, you can select any value between 0 and 255. In this case, a value of 0 would result in no rotation, and a value of 255 would result in maximum speed. Each increment of 51 corresponds to about 20% power. Because I'm using a 10 volt power supply, a speed value of 51 would essentially result in 2 volts at the motor. Now let's update the main loop. This time I'm going to set B1B to 0 and B1A to the same value as our speed variable. It will start off with 20% power, but each time the loop iterates it will increase the power by 20%. Once it is past full power, we will reset the speed variable back to 20%. I will do this by adding the analog write commands before the time delays and the speed incrementing after the delays. That way it will hold each speed for about 4 seconds. Now let's test our code again. As you can see, the gear motor continues to function as it did before, switching directions every two seconds. But the vibrating motor changes speed every four seconds and then slows back down once it reaches full speed. Hopefully you have found this video useful. If you did, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you are interested in learning more about the L9110 board, watch part 2 of the series on how to control linear actuators or part 3 on how to control stepper motors.